Hello and welcome to this introductory video for V-Ray for Form Z. In this video, we cover a general overview of how to use V-Ray for Form Z and its functionality to get you rendering right away. To access the primary interface, go to the Palettes menu and turn on the V-Ray toolbar. This gives you access to icons for settings, launching a production render and an interactive render, which you can then view in the V-Ray frame buffer or VFB found here. Open the settings dialog. We have settings for the render engine, including the types of rendering and its overall quality, all of which always appear at the top of this dialog. Below this is a drop-down menu to select categories of settings to display in the dialog. These include camera settings, environment, as well as finer details that control the ray tracer and global illumination and so forth. But out of the box, V-Ray is already set up pretty well to be controlled easily, such as using this quality slider, which behind the scenes changes several appropriate settings without the user getting into the specifics of the settings if they don't want to. But basically, Lower quality settings give faster results for quick looks and tests, while higher settings give you production level, client ready output. It's really that easy to set for a fast workflow for just about any kind of scene. Now, if I click reset here as if I were rendering for the very first time, I get another quick way to set up my scenes rendering according to my workflow. For example, if I'm rendering an architectural project, which is good for interiors as well as exteriors, or if I'm working on a product design, which gives me versatile settings for visualizing a product as if I'm in a studio environment. I'll leave it to architectural and I'll click OK. Now you'll see under the lights rollout in the palette dock that we've been given a V-Ray sunlight as default. Now, when you double click the light, you'll see the parameters in the dialog to give you access to that light's controls. Now that goes for any kind of light that you have in this list. Now let's go to the palettes menu and select V-Ray lights to open a toolbar to create the different kinds of lights, such as the mesh light, rectilinear light, sphere light, IES lights, point lights, bot lights, and of course the dome light, which is a very handy light, especially when using HDRs for image-based environment and studio lighting. And of course, you can use any of these lights regardless of the type of project that you chose earlier between that architectural or product design. Now back to the palette menu to open the V-Ray Tools toolbar for access to some neat functions V-Ray has to offer, like an infinite ground plane so that you don't have to worry about making a flat ground manually. We've got V-Ray displacement mapping as well as proxies, giving you the ability to input and output V-Ray scenes to and from other packages, such as V-Ray for 3ds Max, Maya, Rhino, SketchUp, and so forth. We've got the V-Ray clipper right here, making it easier to make cross-sections of objects, and V-Ray Fur for effects like grass. Now we'll get into more details on these features in later videos, but I just wanted to show you where they live in the UI. Now let's talk a little bit about materials. By default, V-Ray picks up the basic material properties in the Form Z scene as I open the material properties for the mullions material that's already in this scene. These include the native shaded materials from Form Z, but also render zone materials. And V-Ray will render these materials pretty well straight out of the box. So even with legacy material libraries, you'll at least get a very good head start on how well V-Ray renders the materials. Now with either of these shader types, you can always switch over to the V-Ray material type, as I'll do with these mullions, converting them to a V-Ray material. Their existing settings pretty much stay intact, but I get V-Ray controls to create more photoreal looks for these surfaces. And you can see in the preview how that material comes together as we adjust its parameters. For example, it's currently set to generic material type that I can change to be a number of other different material templates to give it a more specific look. 
These templates make it pretty easy to get looks and then customize them as you need in your scene to create anything from glass to plastics and so on. I'm going to select metal for my mullions and I'm presented with just the options for that material type that I really need to make my metal look the way I want. I'll click on the diffuse color and I'll set the gray to be a touch darker. And as I adjust the glossiness value of the material, I can make this metal not as sharp and reflective for a rougher reflective surface finish. I can also add a bump map here using a bitmap image file or any number of these procedural textures, which also happen to work in any map slot in Form Z. Now, to get access to even more customizable material looks, I can click on the Use V-Ray Material File from the Method drop-down menu. Here we see a path to a .VR mat file. These VR mat files define the look of a material. Here you can see material libraries are set up with icons representing a range of more specific materials which are then organized into intuitive categories. There are well over 500 of these already set up templates that ship with V-Ray for Form Z, all of which you can further customize as you need. Go ahead and click around and check out the different categories and the materials offered in each of those categories, such as fabrics or these plastics that you can choose from. For example, these plastics are set up as a base with just a simple black or gray color that you can then further tweak. For example, if I want to change the color, I'll double click on this plastic leather material to select it. Here you can see the path to the actual VR matte file. The 10 centimeter mark in its name tells you the scale of that pattern so you can get a more physically correct proportion on your object. So now all I need to do is click edit to tweak this material for my needs. This loads the V-Ray standalone material editor, which is similar where you have the same material types that we saw in the Form Z UI earlier. I'll select plastic from here, which is what I had before, but now I'll change the color to a blue plastic leather, for example, which kind of looks like a couch I used to have in college. I can then save this customized material as a VR mat file to my regular library which I can use anytime I need. So if I click select material here, I can then navigate to the VR mat that I just saved to my library and I get that blue plastic leather material into my scene. And now you can see my mullion geometry has turned blue. Now that's a little tacky for this building, so I'll go back to the metal material templates and set the mullions to be this brushed aluminum material by simply double clicking it. So this aluminum is now applied to my mullions. Now let's take a look at how this renders out of the box with the default settings that we chose earlier by clicking the production render icon in the toolbar and you'll start seeing some pretty good results in the V-Ray Frame Buffer, or VFB, using V-Ray's Progressive Rendering Engine, which gives fast visual feedback of the rendered image, which then progressively refines itself over time to a final quality output. So if you like your lighting and materials, you can go ahead and stop the progressive render when you like the refinement of that image. You can output the image from the VFB by clicking the floppy disk icon and saving it as an image file to share with people as you need to. As you can see, getting productive in V-Ray for Form Z is pretty quick using these preset templates, but you still have fine control to get just the look that you need, which we will cover in future videos. So thank you for joining us for this simple introductory video going over the basic use and functionality to get rendering quickly and easily in V-Rate for Form Z.